right, so here we are for the first episode. Well, the first episode filmed. I think it might be dropping this way. I'm not sure. We're going to have to wait and find out. For the first episode filmed for Brawlin' Board Games. This is where I take two board games that are identical or slightly identical, seem alike, or just have similarities enough that, de that you know, determine to me that they could be, uh, you know, fighting it out together, so to speak, about which does it, whatever it is, better than the other one. So as you saw from the thumbnail, this time we're going after Horrified, with the Universal Monsters slugging it out against the American Monsters. And we're going to start with the first thing that you're going to notice with either of these games, and that's the box. So now, looking at both these boxes, we can see that they both have beautiful artwork. They depict the monsters that are represented in the game uh, perfectly, beautifully. Sweet artwork all around on both of them. Now, as far as the art style goes, uh, I think the big difference, or the only real difference in the boxes, is the inside art. Now, not the inside of the box itself, uh, but the, 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 the case of the box, not the cover, the case of the box uh, along the outside rim. There's art on both of those. Now, the art for American Monsters has a subtlety to it, which works well. I, I don't mind. Uh, I don't mind it at all. I think it's it's very well done. But I prefer the artwork on the side of the Universal box. It's more direct, just like the monsters. Very, very direct. And uh, the little write-up on each side of the box is a nice touch, also. So both boxes have beautiful art. The artist need to be applauded, I think. However, I'm going to say, in my opinion, that the Universal Bon Monsters box is a little bit better. So we're going to give the victory to that round to Universal Monsters. Now, looking at the boards. Both boards are beautiful. The art style pops well. It looks good. It depicts things easily. You can see where things are on the board, even if it may take you a moment to, uh, to remember, maybe a few games in, remember automatically off the top of your head where each specific location is, they still look generally different enough that it's, it's, it's easy to discern when you're looking at it. Now, uh, looking at the numbers, crunching the numbers here, we see that uh, Universal Monsters has 19 locations on it. There are 19 different location sites, while the American Monsters has 23. Now... Although it has more, I do want to keep in mind that the Universal board has three spaces for monsters only. Well, even if it is only specifically one monster that's ever going to be there, uh, it does have uh, those spots that the, that the characters, the uh, investigators, cannot go on. And I think that that makes it a little bit more strategic, uh, but because there's more in the Universal, I'm going to give this a push. I'm giving this a push, and both are going to get a score for this. Now, diving right into the components, we uh, the first thing I want to talk about we see is the standees. The standees for the villagers. Now, a townsfolk. Now, the Universal game has 10 villagers in it, while the American game has 13. Now, although the American game has more, uh, you can't beat the fact that the Universal game has Abbott and Costello that you have to save. <laughs> I can't think of one other board game that Abbott and Costello are actually in. Both games have a really good ratio of male to female investigators or heroes uh, that you can choose to play. However, only the Universal game has an option for a handy-capable uh, character, and uh, that's a character that is in a wheelchair specifically. There is a there is a town folk in American Monsters, but that's not a playable character, uh, so that might make a difference to you. I'm not sure, but I wanted to bring that up. Tokens. Item tokens, specifically. Both of these games have the same number, and that is 60 in each of these games. Now, 
the color, they're all color coded. The color, everything in this game is color coded. And I think the color coding for the item tokens in the Universal games is more eye friendly to individuals that are or have degrees of color blindness. Uh, I, I find it a little bit a blending in the American Monsters version. But uh, I have no problem whatsoever with discerning any of the colors apart at all uh, in the Universal game. So again, that might be something that means something to you. Now, uh, both these games have the same number 30 of monster cards and 20 of the perk cards for the players. They show three dice, five reference cards, a frenzy marker, terror marker, and item token bags. Now, with the exception of the item token bags, they're all uh, identical. Dice are different colors, but uh, they're generally all identical or identical enough that uh, I think all of those items there get a push on each other. There's nothing better or worse uh, between one of the game boxes or the other for any of those components. Now, aside from the bag, now the bag in the American Monsters looks great, or great-ish anyway. Uh, the, the colors for it match the color theme of that board game, uh, that for that box, uh, everything in the system. It matches that. However, it may not be just a plain black cloth sack like we find in Universal, but it's not as good. It's not. I, I find the plasticky material, uh, I don't like it. The fact that it has a little, the little Velcro to tab it. I don't like that. I don't, there's nothing, the art is nice, but otherwise there's nothing else about the universal bag uh, that is uh, worse uh, <laughs> than, than the American. What I mean is the universal bag is much better. Uh, plain black strap, uh, the tie works great. That pleathery, plasticky thing uh, from, from American Monsters, uh, no, no, I'll take a pass on that any day. Yeah, so uh, overall, looking at the components, uh, I, I gotta say, though it's not winning by much, I gotta give the components to Universal. Now let's look at something everyone looks at in a game like this, and that's the miniatures. Now, both these games have miniatures for the monsters, the cryptids, uh, the villagers and the uh, investigators, heroes, all have standees, but they wanted to go all out for these monsters. So let's take a comparison look at the Universal versus the American monsters. Now the miniatures in Universal are good. They they represent the monsters. Uh, you, you're gonna, I think you're gonna be able to paint them. Uh, if you wanna make them look identical to the Universal monsters, you'll be able to do that with these minis. Uh, if you wanna make them unique, go for it. Do something crazy. Uh, maybe, maybe Frankenstein's wearing a Hawaiian shirt in yours. I don't know. But <laughs> that's actually a really funny picture in my head. Uh, but I think that the Universal are not as good, not as detailed. I think it's a better way to phrase it. Not as detailed as we find in the American Monster game. Uh, they, they seem to have upped their game, I think, uh, Robinsberger, when they came out with these with these new miniatures for their for their uh, American Monster game. They... Uh, they went a little bit further than they did with the Universal. So as far as miniatures go, yeah, I've I've got to give that to uh, American Monsters. Now, as far as the individual monsters go between the two games, I'm not going to rate them because they're all identical. Mm, now, <laughs> hold on. Hold on. I can't see it, but I can already feel it. Now, what I mean is I know they're not identical. It's not like you're only fighting werewolves or something through each and all of these games. Now, what I mean is the way they're created is identical, that each of these monsters is its own mini game. Uh, so the fact that they just kept that the same between both is a push. It doesn't make one better than the other because they're all different. They're all unique. And that's what makes them stand out. And that's what makes this as a push is because it's so great of a system. So as far as the monsters go and how you interact with them, how you defeat them in the game, uh, what they're all about with these mini games, it's a push. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, because it's it's all the same stuff. You have mechanic A to get to mechanic B, and then you beat them. 
and it works. I'm not putting it down. No, I, I enjoy it. It works fine. I'm just pointing out that there's no reason to separate between one game and the other since it's all using the same exact mechanic. Now the investigators, the heroes, the players are going to play these characters in the game. Uh, what's up with them? Well, here's the big secret. They're all the same. No, I, I definitely mean that this time. Uh, they are identical to each other. Uh, it's just putting a new picture and a new name and a new starting location on the already existing Universal Investigators. Uh, they, they, their special abilities are ex exactly the same, completely identical. So as far as this goes, uh, I think it was lazy, uh, but I got no, no, no choice but to give it a push because uh, they are, they're identical. <sighs> Try something original next time. Now, uh, I want to point, I did point out the monsters before, but I want to, I want to look at the monster mats real quickly because uh, there's a marked difference between the two games with the monster mats. Now, the monster mat for American monsters, uh, I mean, both mats have the same information that you need in more or less the same places. But what they did with the American monsters is they, they made it a little more compact, a little bit easier to fit on the table, a little bit uh, smaller of a footprint that it's going to leave there. And that, that makes a big difference, especially to me since I do a lot of filming with the games that I run. Uh, so I appreciate that more. So as far as the monster mats go between the two games, <sighs> I've got to give that to American Monsters. Now, the rules. The rules to both of these games. Let's take a look at them side by side. Well, actually, we really don't have to because they're pretty much... Yeah, they're identical. There's no difference in the rule system whatsoever uh, between playing one game and the other game. In fact, if it wasn't for the fact that there are different starting locations, you could very easily play an investigator from Universal Monsters and place them here in American Monsters and vice versa. There's so much similarity in the, in the, in, in the rules, complete similarity, that these games really are, to a degree, compatible. You could have to do a little bit of, of work, but you, I mean, you could do it if you wanted to, but I think the real reason everyone says these games aren't compatible, because although, like I said, a little bit of work, you could make them work together, uh, but I think the real reason is why. Uh, there really is no reason. Uh, just because you want to have a game where the Jersey Devil is running around the same scenario as Dracula, is that really enough of a reason? just to do it because there's i find no reason whatsoever and i would have loved to have just broken this whole concept that these games are incompatible together i would have loved to have done that and i looked at it and i and i saw that you can you can put this together but there's no reason to so don't <laughs> yeah uh, but the rules are that they're they're identical uh to pretty much every degree and uh, it says a lot, in a good way. If you know one game, then you're going to know how to play the other one. So as, as far as these rules go, this, this is another push. So, looking at the scores. <sighs> it looks like Universal squeaked by with one vote to win. So it really is close. It shows whether you agree with how I decided what I preferred, maybe it's not what you preferred, uh, but still, I think you have to admit, even if you disagree with me, this is a really tight choice. This is a very, very close race, and that means both games are great, but Universal, I think, uh, I think has won on a technical count. <laughs> so happy buddy, Big John NG, the Two Gun Pixar presents <laughs> Legendary Gaming and I, hey!